Hey, this is Megan and Cece with another What We're Cooking and Eating Now bonus episode. In addition to our regular weekly episodes, twice a month, we give you a real-time rundown of what we're cooking for our families and also whether they liked it or not. (laughs) (laughs) In each of these episodes, we'll walk you all the way through one recipe and then we'll list five others. So all in, you get six easy weeknight dinner ideas that we've tested and that maybe our kids like and maybe they don't. But we'll be honest about it is the thing. You can use our ideas as inspiration or literally turn them into your meal plan for next week. We share the links for all the recipes we mentioned in our free community, which you can join by going to didn'tijustfeedyou.com backslash community. All you have to do is enter your email, which we keep private, and then look out for the post with all the what we're cooking and eating now details. Huzzah! Okay, we're Okay, back. this is the first one that we've done together in a while. I know. I'm very delighted. So give everyone like a quick where we're at. I, my kids are starting back to school the week this episode airs, but you are still uh, in vacay mode. So what are you cooking and eating right now? Yeah, and it's, I'm very much in summer cooking mode, which I know might seem late to some people, but... We were traveling for almost a month at the beginning of summer. Then there's always the transition back. So there's like a week and a half of just like gray area. (laughs) And now where we still have like four weeks before school starts or something like that. So I feel like this is the time when I'm like going to the farmer's market and being inspired. And, you know, I'm tired of eating out because we ate out so much when we were away. So... Slightly inspired. (laughs) I like that. I'm glad for that. Slightly inspired. I can't say fully because, you know, at this point in the summer, spending time with my kids and my family is really exhausting. Isn't that a weird, a very weird, I've been like living in it where I'm like, okay, we got to like just a few more days left until school starts. So we got to like do some bucket list kind of things. But also I'm so tired of you guys. Please go back to school. I'm Dude. so ready for it. So tired. I mean, we we won't get into it. Maybe in, <laughs> maybe in a listener's group episode, but yes. I had a full on meltdown Aww. before recording with you. And you helped me. Thank you. Because I'm like, oh my gosh. It's just, it's a lot because a lot. you don't feel like you get time alone. You start to let things slide. Then you feel like a bad parent. And then you're like trying to make up for it and be like fun mom. I don't know. There's just a yes. lot. There's so many layers. It's really intense. And I just want to like sit by a pool and do my work and record with you. Yeah. And but cook. instead, and cook. Yes, I was going to yes. say, but instead I'm making dinners, but those dinners have been slightly inspired. Okay. Okay. So one is inspired by our travels. We spent a little time in Paris this summer, and I forgot how much they like smoked salmon. (laughs) I feel like that's like a weird thing. But one of the things when I came back home and I went shopping, I always buy sliced smoked salmon, like lox style, because Oliver really likes it for breakfast or in a sandwich for lunch. But you know how they now sell those vacuum packed, those vacuum sealed hunks of smoked salmon. Yeah, it's like a a whole filet. A whole filet. And I literally had never purchased one. Okay. And I decided to purchase it. Actually, I needed two for this. I made a pasta with smoked salmon and a creme fraiche sauce. Ooh. So it was just like really simple, smoky chives, tarragon. I don't know. To me, in my mind, it was very French and I was very happy with myself. So you basically cook pasta, and then I took, you know, a mug full of pasta cooking water. That's always important, especially when you're going to make a sauce out of dairy and you just don't want like a whole quart of dairy without anything to help it emulsify and water it down a little. I put the pasta back in the pot with some pasta cooking water, a little heavy cream, some creme fraiche, lemon zest, a little fresh lemon juice, and salt. And I tossed it up and then I broke up that smoked salmon and tossed it in there with some fresh herbs at the end. And actually, I had a little bit, you know, we talk about Brightland oils. We love them. I had a little bit of uh, chili oil that I finished mine with just to give it a little bit of spice. But the boys didn't have it with chili oil. And it came out great. It was really delicious. I just served that with a salad of greens and radicchio with a very simple vinaigrette. Okay, I have some logistical questions because okay. this feels so right up our family's alley. I know that I, like Ella is not, I've said before that Ella is not really into seafood, but she will sometimes eat smoked salmon. Mm-hmm. Also, you could do that 
delicious pasta sauce and like do green beans or peas instead of the smoked salmon. So that would be an easy for us. Do you think that pasta shape matters here? And what shape did you use? So I'm not one of those people who gets really hardcore about pasta shapes, but I do discern between long pasta and cut pasta. Yes. So I used cut pasta. I happen to have rigatoni. Rigatoni actually isn't my favorite. Unless it's meat sauce. Like the the tube is too big and a regular sauce like isn't enough to I want it to be like filled, like minicotti or something. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like it's such a big tube. But like meat sauce, you'll get like some Yes chunks of beef in there and I'm like, yeah. It's like a little surprise. (laughs) And when you have something a little chunkier like the smoked salmon, it's hard to like make sure that the inside is also coated with the sauce in rigatoni tubes. And so then you're like, you kind of get some bites that are not bland, but like aren't as seasoned totally. or as delicious. So I totally get that. What would you have used in a In a perfect world? world? I don't know. I'm thinking either penne or something without uh, an opening, like not a okay. tube, but like a spiral, like fusilli or something. I have been having a love affair this summer with, oh my gosh, now I'm going to blank on it. Is it cap? A t- cap? Cavatappi. Cavatappi. Thank you. That's been my like go-to this summer. And this week when we were, Emmett helped me grocery shop and he was like, I don't want that shape. I want the bow ties. And we got Farfalli for this week's meals. Okay. Can I tell you that I don't like it either? (laughs) I feel like the pinched part never cooks as well as the wings. And so (laughs) you get like a weird texture. I totally agree with you. I think this leads to the idea that we should do an episode that is like the hierarchy of pasta shapes and like what I'm pasta so shapes we put into it. Put in our pantry. Okay, so then my last question, and then we can move on from smoked salmon. I want to yeah. hear what else you cooked. Cold or room temperature or hot for this pasta dish? What's the temperature you're eating it at? It was it was like off the stove, so it yeah. wasn't like piping hot, but it is a good room temperature one. I don't think I would like it cold because of the creme fraiche sauce. Be too thick. I feel like would hard, yeah, would like harden and get a little thick. But it's definitely a great room temperature one, like one that you can make and then like cover it up, walk away, go have a drink with your partner and let the kids play in the backyard, sip on a glass of wine or a cup of tea and then come back and everybody eat. Beautiful. That okay. would work nicely. What else this week? So what else this week? I grilled some sausages and crusty bread. Sausages, Stacey. I love sausages. So in the summer, I get really into like really simple proteins. You'll see my next meal is the same thing. And then making vegetables or salads, like really the main star. So I made a salad with sliced peaches sliced tomatoes, grilled halloumi. Actually, I used bread cheese, which is very similar, but halloumi bread cheese, either one. And then um, I added some fresh basil and I dressed it with oil, sherry vinegar, lemon juice, lemon zest, a tiny splash of fish sauce to give it that little something extra. It's always really delicious on these like fruit, vegetable, summer salads. And I finished with crunchy salt. Beautiful. You're doing a Megan of like the very de- very detailed explanation. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> but like that, recipe, that, but was okay. I know, that was the star. I know. That was the star. You needed to explain it to us because it was like yes. otherwise just sausage, grilled bread, and salad. I yes. get it. So it was really about this star of a salad. And then the third meal is I grilled steaks and I did a steakhouse tomato salad. For my birthday, we went to a steakhouse and it was, the salad was so good. And I went to the farmer stand and they actually had these huge, gorgeous, sweet Vidalia onions. I was like, that's perfect. So just literally sliced tomato, sliced onion, and I made a steakhouse dressing. Yum. It was so, so good. So good. All right. What'd you eat? This is funny that you mentioned Vidalia onions just right now because... The top of my list is that we had BLTs for dinner, but really we had BLTs because I wanted a BLT, but Brian basically ate French onion dip for dinner because he doesn't love tomatoes. I mean, I bought sandwich stuff, so like the kids had turkey and cheese sandwiches. I'm so here for it. (laughs) 
I want French onion dip. For I know, right? Well, we for some reason we had so many onions this week, and I know onions last forever. But because of the way we do some storage stuff, I was just like, I need to work through these onions, and so I had like sweet onions, red onions, a couple yellow onions, and I just caramelized a big batch and then froze some of the caramelized onions for future dinners in some super cubes. But that was the dinner was like French onion dip, uh, BLTs, turkey sandwiches, and ruffles, which are the superior dip chip, in my opinion. Oh, then, damn. Oh, damn. Know. She's throwing down. Okay, go ahead. Unless it's salsa and we're getting into tortilla chips, but I feel like that's like a whole nother episode for another time. Okay, last week on like a brainstorming call or maybe even a recording, you mentioned chicken cutlets and I could not stop thinking about them. So this week we had chicken cutlets. I just did, I didn't follow a recipe. I'm sure there's one in winner, winner chicken dinner, but I just did like basic breading procedure, flour, eggs, breadcrumbs, and shallow fried the cutlets. And then we had succotash, which is like just a veggie saute. I was trying, I was like thinking about it while I was cooking. I was like, is succotash like Southern stir fry? It's not really. Oh, it's not. But what was in it? Red, I did red onion, zucchini, uh, frozen shelled edamame, corn and tomatoes and then a bunch of like fresh basil and chives. what kind of tomatoes did you chop up whole tomatoes or cherry tomatoes? i had like from blt night because mm-hmm. i took out the super premium slices for my blt i had like the ends of yeah. an heirloom tomato that was like or it was a, it was kind of like a zebra tomato of like orange red and yellow mm-hmm. and then i had a handful of cherry tomatoes that i sliced in half and like when i cook a succotash that like i mentioned the order like I fried the onions and the zucchini, but then like the edamame and corn kind of get added and sort of steam for a minute. And then off the heat is when I would add the tomato and basil and stuff. So, and then just and like, how do you season it? Just salt and pepper, salt and pepper. Um, I did do a little bit of smoked malt, malt vinegar, but mm-hmm. you could do like lemon juice or any, just a little bit of acidity right at the end. Great. Sounds delicious. And we did do grilled bread also which was a big hit in my my house kids didn't love succotash they did eat like the edamame and corn and stuff but picked around everything else and then um speaking of summer bucket list because it is the last week of school of summer break for my kids Emmett really wanted to make sushi at home it's been on his list all summer I don't have the sushi rolling mats so we just did sushi ritos and that was like a really fun we took a field trip to a new seafood place near us. And then I just like grated veggies or not even grated, but mandolin sliced them. And we did nori and sushi rice. And honestly, I feel like that could become regular weeknight rotation. Like we could do imitation crab instead of like nice salmon. We could do smoked salmon, which you mentioned. We could even do like cream cheese and just like veggies and special sauce, like a special sauce. Sushi Ritos, I think are going into my... Nice, I like it. Rotation. Did Ella eat it? Does she eat? She likes fish all. Uh, no, raw like raw or like lightly seasoned salmon. She's an absolute no on that. I hear you. It's just uh, kids are weird. Kids and they'll are be weird. like Smoked Oliver's. Salmon? Like I hate cheese, and then eats like four kinds of cheeses. Like if you put it out, no one else can get a bite in. <laughs> yes. Oh my god. Um. No, but she liked all the other veggies. So she did do like nori, sushi rice, all the other veggies. And then we had edamame, more of like the leftover frozen edamame. And I just steamed it in the microwave really quickly. So I felt like she got enough protein. Not that that's like a major concern, but she was full and she was happy with dinner. I don't know. Is it going to be like weird exposure therapy if I'm just like, we're doing this once a month because the rest of us love it (laughs) and you hate it. Figure out a sushi combination that you like. Yeah, I mean, you're still giving her a choice. I'm yeah. here for it. She did try to convince me to cook the box of farfalle that night. She's like, what if you just boil some pasta for me? And I was like, I will not be doing that. Hey, girl, if you want to boil your own pasta, knock yourself out. No, I didn't even. I guess it was one of those nights where I was like, I no, don't even want to. You're like, not off. even that. Like, you're like, just get not. out of my kitchen. We're not dirtying this another pan. You get what you get. You don't get upset. It's one of like there's those those <laughs> assembly meals where you're like, oh, this is easy. I'm just like cooking rice and like slicing veggies. And then you look around the kitchen afterwards yeah. and you're like, what the hell? 
helpful. Yes. I ordered a mandolin, a mesh um, strainer, a mixing bowl to like rinse the rice, a smaller mixing bowl for the rice. I just like so much. And then. Okay. Before we close it out, because I can so deeply relate to what you're saying, at the same time, you said you would make this part of your regular rotation. So do you have any tips for how to make it? You did mention like not having to go to the special place to get the high quality fish, right? That makes a huge difference. But is it this kind of thing where like, if you've taken the time on Sunday because you had an opportunity and you felt like it to prep veggies, then you're like, oh, great. Now I'll add sushi ritos. Like... You can kind of link those two behaviors together to make your life easy where you're only deciding once. Like every time I do this, prep these veggies, I know I'll make sushi ritos one night. Yes. I also had the thought of like I could buy pre-shredded carrots and like even coleslaw mix because we just did like a little bit of diced cabbage. And here's the other part is that it's been a really long time since I cooked sushi rice. So I was like following the directions explicitly Mm -hmm. and later realized like, oh, the bowl that I had been using to like really rinse the rice, I could have also mixed the like rice wine vinegar, sugar and salt that you usually do as like the on the as the dressing on the warm rice back in that bowl instead of dirtying another smaller bowl to add it to. So there are some steps where I was like, oh, yeah, now that I've done this once, I know I can eliminate dishes along the way, as well as some of the prep work by buying Got some it. shortcut ingredients. So, yeah, cool. I will be doing that in the future. Hey, we're back in the saddle and there are Ooh. lots of good ideas here. Yay. All right. So, you guys, this new, is it new anymore? It's not new. This bi-monthly <laughs> series is thanks in part to the generous support of our Didn't I Just Feed You supporting membership. So a huge shout out and thank you to our Didn't I Just Feed You squad, as I lovingly call them, although that makes me sound super old and out of touch. <laughs> you can find out more about becoming a supporting member at didn't I just feed you.com backslash community. And hey, you know what? Like if it's not the right time to be paying money to support us, we completely get that. You can always just get the links for these episodes by joining the free section of our community. A huge thank you to our editor, Samantha Gatsik. Thanks for listening. Stay sane and well-fed. Until next time. 